reaction. When you say an anaphylactic reaction or the shock, it is the most severe type of response. Okay? So anaphylactic shock, again, histamines and the complements are released. It causes massive vasodilation, peripheral blood uh, pooling, and causes contraction of non-vascular smooth muscles like your respiratory tract. So you get shortness of breath, blood isn't circulating, and you can't breathe. Imagine how that feels. Mm. That was me last year. Huh? That was me last year. You had an anaphylactic yeah. shock? From what? Um, I was a protein bar that had prawns in it. And I you were know. dating who? I was eating. Oh, eating. <laughs> you dating, dating, dating a protein bar, <laughs> and I gave her pecans. Okay? I date protein bars. <laughs> yeah, so you're eating a protein bar. It had pecans in it. Oh, you're allergic to pecans. Very. So, so were you not able to breathe? No, and I had to drive myself to the hospital. What about you? Call an ambulance? Like? Yeah. Oh no. No. I took myself. Uh huh. So. I went so, to so what happened? They injected you with what? The lady wasn't listening to me. I was telling her like I'm. Like, I'm my dating a protein red. bar. I'm uh -huh. struggling. <laughs> And she's like, oh, we have to take your blood pressure. And then she's like, we have a code. I was like, oh, fuck. Uh -huh. <laughs> Budge, I mean. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, they ended up giving me, like, a shot. Uh -huh. Which I had an EpiPen at home. I don't know. I just okay. panicked. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's, yeah. Uh, from what I understand, I've got, you know, I don't, I, you know, I have allergies, but I don't have major allergic reactions like that. Even if they're minor, I just, it's just, I, it, I can't stand it. So someone who's actually who can't breathe and getting all that pain systemically, I can't imagine someone going through that and their chest is hurting and there's a lot of pain. Okay, so the more sudden the onset, the more sudden the onset of the symptoms, the more severe the reaction becomes. And most likely shock, respiratory failure, and then also death can occur within minutes. Uh, did I tell you about the one one patient that we uh, had in the cardiac cath lab? For those of you who had 153 with me, we, we had a patient come through the cardiac cath lab. And we do the whole spiel, you know, um, have you had this procedure done before? If so, did anything happen? Do you have any allergies to any types of foods or medications? Do you have asthma? Do you have hay fever? So we go through the whole gambit of asking these, these questions to make sure that the patient is a good candidate for, for contrast. So the patient that we had, he was in his 40s. Put him on the table, started doing the cardiac cath procedure, and we didn't even inject, it was probably less than five cc's into his coronary vessels when his eyes rolled back. And then his blood pressure dropped. And then he went bradycardia, okay? He went into severe shock within seconds. And we started doing CPR because I was uh, operating the X-ray machine at the time, the, the C-arm. So I, I, I literally pushed the doctor out of the way so I can do uh, chest compressions on this patient. And we kept working on this guy, and I kept, you know, we kept doing the compressions. And eventually, I got tired, so we swapped off. And we were doing compressions for almost, I want to say, maybe 15, 15 to 20 minutes with shocks in between. And so um, we continued to uh, do that, and I was doing other things in, in the lab, but it was about 15 minutes, but we continued to do uh, life-sustaining procedures for almost an hour on him, because he was 40, in his 40s, very young guy. And again, we went through the list, he had no history, and there was no reason for us to believe that he was gonna have a, an allergic reaction. Not only did he have an allergic reaction, he went into a full anaphylactic shock, and he died on our table. The irony was, the first, the, only, the first and only shot that we took demonstrated that his coronary vessels were clean. You know what I mean by clean? Yeah, he didn't have to be there. Yeah, exactly. He didn't have to have this procedure done. But he had a procedure done prior to him coming to our department that said he needed to have this procedure done because it indicated that he did have some kind of blockage. And we, when we took the shot, his vessels were clean. Nothing. Yes? Is there anything that you could have done different? Nothing. He, he fell under, and you know, it's a shame, but he fell under the, the statistic of those that, uh, 
that are fatal. You have severe and then you have fatal. So he fell under the, the fatal you know, statistic. Um, it's, the one it it doesn't the happen. I mean, it, it happens, but it doesn't happen that often. And again, you don't, you don't expect this with him because he was in his 40s. He was, uh, you know, very good shape. Um, he, his history was he, he did, uh, he was an athlete in that he did work out a lot. He, was, he didn't have a sedentary life. I mean, you look at him, he's like, uh, yeah. And you look at him, he's like, what are you doing here? Why are we having this procedure done? You know? So these are the things that you don't want to take for granted. Did, did I mention the universal precautions of mm -hmm. contrast media? And what was that? Assume that everyone's going to have. Assume everybody's going to have some kind of reaction. <clears throat> Never ever let your guard down. Okay. All right. So most common causes of anaphylaxis includes. When you guys look at it, does it look like it's moving? Yeah, it's it does, fried, right? Frying my brain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> having flashbacks, dude. So the most common causes of anaphylaxis includes. Drugs, iodinated contrast, oh, drugs. chemotherapeutic agents, anesthesia, certain food products, insect venoms. The pathways of these antigens can be through the skin, through the respiratory tract, as well as the GI tract. So these are common pathways for these antigens to enter your system. Okay. When contrast is injected, the radiographer must observe the patient continuously for any signs of allergic reaction. If early sign or symptoms of anaphylaxis is observed, the radiographer must respond quickly since death may follow in a few moments. So again, the, the moment that the patient starts uh, manifesting some of these symptoms, you know, if they say, I can't breathe, I'm getting itchy, if they start to sneeze, you guys with me? Mm -hmm. Okay, Things like that, you cannot take those signs for granted you need to be ready to activate a code, okay? Be ready. Early signs and symptoms of anaphylactic shock includes tightness of chest, itching at the site of the injection or around the eyes and nose. Nasal congestion, sneezing and coughing may be demonstrated. Uh, the patient may feel apprehensive, and I've had patients also say, you know what, I don't feel good, I don't feel good. I, the feeling of doom. Like it's the end of the world. Okay. Now, and I think I also told you guys this before, is in my experience, I've only had about three anaphylactic shocks. The rest were moderate type of experiences, but three severe. One was fatal. The other was we were able to, you know, bring them back. But one ended up being fatal. And again, if you look at the statistics, and again, talking about numbers, I've been working in the cardiac cath lab and interventional radiology for close to 17 years. So it's a very, very, very low number. Very low number. Okay, uh, also, they may experience some nausea, vomiting, and also diarrhea. Okay? Some latent signs and symptoms of anaphylactic shock. Um, I actually have a picture of Kristen here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you swell up like that? Got some lip injections or what? My face is really, really red. They wanted it okay. to be. Like this, okay? Yeah, so you got, got a rash, okay. So, latent signs and symptoms of anaphylactic shock may include angioneurotic edema. That's basically just a fancy word for swelling. Okay, so there's swelling of the face, the hands, and other body parts. Uh, urticaria. Uh, now, if there's choking, wheezing, dyspnea, and sign, uh, and uh, I'm sorry, choking, wheezing, that's a sign, okay, that your respiratory tract is getting constricted. That's a real bad sign. So uh, people, people need to do some intervention pretty quickly. Uh, dyspnea, what is that? Difficulty breathing. Difficulty breathing and then cyanosis. There's going to be a drop in blood pressure, rapid or unusually slow pulse is going to happen. It's usually rapid, dilated pupils, and then change in level of consciousness. Again, this is based on your initial ass assessment. 
If there is a change in the way they're behaving, if there's a change in their level of consciousness, that's all based on your initial assessment when the patient first presents in your department, in your care. Okay. okay. So, again, kind of the same nuances. When you have a patient complaining or experiencing some of these, these manifestations, you need to stop immediately. Because again, you're injecting that contrast. Usually with, uh, when we're performing uh, an iodinated contrast study, it's generally a minimum of 15 to 20, degree, uh, 20 cc's minimum of iodine that we are doing. So if they start, you know, if you're pushing in 10 cc's and they start experiencing some of these symptoms, don't finish with the remaining 10. You're like, hold on. Just, yeah, can you, I got 10 cc's more, just hang on. <laughs> yeah. We're almost okay. done. You gotta stop what you're doing, okay? Stop, stop the infusion, okay? Observe closely, ask them how they're doing, observe for any type of changes, and be ready to call for the doctor, call for help, call for a code, all right? Get ready to help, be ready to help, be ready to assist, take vitals every five minutes, da 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 da, and then be ready to perform CPR if needed, okay? So have an emergency cart ready, when performing a contrast administration. Anytime you are performing some kind of contrast study vascularly, mm -hmm. there are a series of questions that you ask. This is part of the consent. So some of the questions you're gonna ask is, are you allergic to any foods or medications? A lot of people have allergies to eggs, peanuts, pecans, mm -hmm. strawberries, right? Pollen. Shellfish. I told you I'm allergic to shellfish, right? It doesn't stop me from eating it. <laughs> but I eat a lot of shellfish. Do you have asthma or hay fever? Have you ever had highs or any other type of allergic skin reactions? Have you ever had an x-ray exam where they injected contrast media? Any of these things, if they say yes to it, increases the risk of having a reaction a minimum of two to three times, even up to 10 times more. If the patient has a long history of allergic reaction to food and drugs, the procedure may be postponed. Now, normally, as protocol, what we do now with our patients is, before they come in to have this procedure done, we pre-medicate them. When we say pre-medicate, what type of medication are we talking about here? Antihistamines. Benadryl and what else? The Remember the solucor test, solucor Did we talk about that? Anti-inflammatory. Yeah, yeah, so uh, steroids. So one is anti-histamatic, uh, and the other one is going to be anti-inflammatory. Yeah, anti-inflammatory. So we'll pre-medicate them the night before, and then we'll also pre-medicate them the day of, right before they have the procedure done, to decrease any chances of any of these reactions. Now, even if you pre-medicate them, is there still a possible, a possible chance that they may have a reaction? Mm -hmm. They still can, but it won't be as severe. So they can still have manifestations, but it won't be as severe. The patient you lost, he was pre-medicated? He was pre-medicated. Wow. Yeah, we, Kath thought we pre-medicate all our patients. And yeah, he still had a major reaction. Okay. So a patient who has no history of allergies still may have an anaphylactic response. Again, remember that, okay? This is important. A patient who has no history, even still, you need to be cautious, okay? If the patient complains about itching, if swelling or redness of skin appears, or if the patient seems unduly anxious, Stop the infusion immediately and inform the radiologist or the physician and monitor the patient very closely. Um, you guys know the difference between a uh, bolus injection mm -hmm. and an infusion? Mm -hmm. Bolus is rapid. Okay. Well, bolus is a large amount. Okay, a large amount, short period of time. Uh, an infusion is same amount for a longer duration. So it's, it's how it's delivered. Uh, most of the um, contrast procedures that we do vascularly is done as a bolus, large amount, short time. Okay. All right. 
So if the patient goes into anaphylactic shock, again, stop what you're doing. Place the patient in a semi-fowlers or a seated upright position. Prepare to assist with the administration of oxygen and other types of fluids and medications. These are the medications that I need you guys to be familiar with. Okay, we've seen enough movies. Someone's going into cardiac arrest. You always got somebody yelling out, Epi. That's the first line, that's the first drug of choice for anybody who's going into an anaphylactic shock, or in this case, even cardiac arrest is gonna be the first drug of choice. So epinephrine, I think you only have increased the sensitivity of electrical shock on there, mm -hmm. and it's not, it's just a small, a small portion of it. Epinephrine increases the heart rate, increases the muscle strength, increases blood pressure, as well as the sensitivity to electrical shock. So basically, it strengthens the heart. It makes it more vigor, more strong, okay? When they're going through some kind of shock or cardiogenic type of uh, process. So that's epinephrine. What's another name for epinephrine? Adrenaline, adrenaline yes. So this is adrenaline, okay? So epinephrine is adrenaline. The next one here is diphenhydramine or Benadryl, that's your antihistamine. Then you got your hydrocortisone, these are your steroids, they're anti-inflammatory. So these are your steroids. The sample I gave you a couple of weeks ago was solucortif and solumedrol, were some other types of anti-inflammatory, you guys remember that? Mm -hmm. Solucortif and solumedrol. Then we have uh, aminophilin that helps open up the airway. And if the patient stops breathing, begin pulmonary resuscitation. If they are both restless and pulseless, you're gonna do CPR. <clears throat> All right. If the patient does have a reaction, you want to mark their records appropriately so that when the patient comes back for another procedure, there is that red flag it alerts us that, hey, this patient was here before, they had a reaction, which will now cause us to be more cautious. Should we be cautious anyway? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, we should be cautious anyway. But to have that red flag over there, it does help us better understand that we probably need to take some extra precautions and be ready if this patient goes into another type of response. Um, so it should be tagged, uh, the film records should be tagged, um, also documented in the chart. Radiologist should know reaction in his or her dictated report as well. Okay. If the patient has a response or re reaction, we don't want to send them home right away. We want to keep them under observation for a minimum of 30 minutes. Okay, a minimum of 30 minutes. It says here, you know, keep them for about 30 minutes, but it's a minimum of 30 minutes. Okay. Can a patient still have a, re a reaction hours after they've had the injection? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, what is that called? Latent effect, right? So you can still have a latent effect. Um, the, key, the key here, again, though, is that the longer that, the longer that there is no response, the less likely that they are gonna have a response. But again, you don't wanna let your guard down, so you can still have a latent effect. And if they do, um, you need to instruct the patient of what to do if they start to get itchiness, if they have any hives, if they have any difficulty breathing, um, yeah. so on and so forth. They need to get themselves back to the emergency room right away. Okay, so they should also be advised of that. Uh, most of the time if someone's going to, if they're having an allergic reaction, the patient is giving some, some kind of sedative, so they may not be able to drive home by themselves. So. Um, those having these type of procedures should also have notified somebody to come get them if needed. There have been times when we've sent people home on a taxi. You guys know what a taxi is? <laughs> Not an Uber? <laughs> we didn't have a yellow Uber. Uber? We didn't have Uber back then. <laughs> so if, uh, if somebody would have this type of issues, any type of issues where they weren't capable of driving themselves home after a procedure, we'd call them a taxi. Okay, so types of anaphylactoid responses, 
it can manifest in many ways. It can manifest through the, uh, through the skin, the GI system, the central nervous system, respiratory, and also the uh, cardiovascular. And I did provide you guys with a chart to refer to um, the type of responses in each of the different anatomical categories from minor to intermediate to also major. Okay, so mm -hmm. go ahead and review that. All right. Um, so the cutaneous response, so anything referring to the skin, it can also refer to the lining of the intestines. Um, generally minor, mild urticaria can happen, itching, itching pallor, and also uh, mild angioedema. Again, this is all mild, so it may not require any type of intervention. Urticaria, uticaria. Can I fix this real quick? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Urticaria. Okay, urticaria may occur within minutes, sometimes hours after injection, and that's why we don't let our patients go home right away after they have the procedure done. Sustained urticaria. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Yeah, you got one up there too. Yeah. <laughs> Sustained urticaria and advanced angioedema is considered intermediate. The drug of choice is your Benadryl and also epinephrine, adrenaline. Okay. The GI response. The GI response, uh, mild uh, for minor, is mild nausea and vomiting. Uh, severe vomiting and diarrhea may occur. As it, as it progressively gets worse, you can have intestinal edema and abnormal crapping. <laughs> this is cramping. <laughs> Let's fix that. It's, it should be cramping. <laughs> but you can't have abnormal cramping. Yeah. You could. It's over here. Okay, but this is cramping. Abnormal cramping are also adverse reactions. Um, <laughs> oxygen and prome promethacin or Phenergan. Are you guys familiar with this medication? You usually find that in cough medication. Okay, Phenergan, okay? So oxygen and Phenergan both relieve mild cases of nausea and also vomiting. Zofran is an anti-emetic drug. I like that. I like these medications. Phenergan, Zofran, Possibly on the test. What else? You can get phenogram with codeine. Absolutely. What, is, that, is that just to help you sleep? The codeine just helps you relax. <laughs> yeah. Uh, codeine is a type of uh, also painkiller. Yeah, but it also helps you relax. And then Phenergan. Just wanting to combo. Yeah. Phenergan is used to, uh, it helps the, uh, relax the, the respiratory system. Especially if you're coughing a lot, it's your bronchioles remain constricted, mm -hmm. so it helps relax the bronchioles for better, um, better breathing. Oh. Is that Ben Ben? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's been banned, bro. <laughs> yeah, I think it's still around. I thought they banned it, didn't they? No, no, I think it's still oh. around. Wow. Yeah, I, I think it's making a comeback because oh. I saw a commercial of it a couple weeks ago. Making a comeback. It was actually a couple weeks ago. It's funny how you brought that up. Yeah, but I think Ben Ben's still around. <laughs> All right, are we okay with the slide? Yeah. Okay, I gotta go back and fix that. <laughs> the crappy part. <laughs> All right, uh, your central nervous system response, minor is headaches and dizziness, intermediate is aphasia and amblyopia, major uh, response includes seizure, paresis, loss of consciousness, and also coma. O2 and diazepam or Valium treats anxiety, muscle spasms, and also seizures. Okay, so now there's Valium. You guys ever hear that when you're telling somebody to relax? Take a Valium? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Take a Valium. And then monitor, monitor vital signs. Now... Is that what a chill pill is or what? A chill pill. <laughs> Did we talk about a transient response a couple weeks ago? Mm -hmm. Transient? Expected response. Which is expected, which is normal. So what are some of the transient responses? Warm flush feeling. Warm flush feeling throughout the body. Metallic taste in the mouth. Okay, those are transient effects and possible nausea. Is that an allergic reaction? No. no. It's not an allergic reaction. So what we're talking about here is allergic reaction. What I just brought up right now, that's a transient 
response, and that's normal. That is expected. This is not, this is, um, this is something that we don't want. So this is an actual allergic response, okay? Cardiovascular response, minor. Uh, tachycardia, most common in uh, as a cardiovascular response. Intermediate response is hypotension, thready pulse, and also possible bradycardia. Uh, relieved by placing the patient in a Trendelenburg position. No. Should be upright position. Can you guys cross that out? Mm -hmm. Put semi fowlers. Put semi fowlers or in an upright position. This needs a lot of cleaning up. Uh, oxygen, IV fluid uh, replacement, and also atropine. Atropine is uh, used for bradycardia, by the way. So atropine is good for bradycardia. Is that written here somewhere? OK, just put it here on the side. Atropine is good for bradycardia. Right there on the very bottom, hypotension. Right here, hypotension with bradycardia. There you go. Okay, acute severe hypotension, cardiac dysrhythmias, loss of consciousness and cardiac arrest can happen. Uh, hypotension with tachycardia, you're gonna use epinephrine. Hypotension with bradycardia, you're gonna use atropine. Oh, that's it, okay. And then you have your chart, all the different drugs and what they do. Um, if I covered it, you need to know it. So There's some things I didn't cover here on the chart, so if I mention them in the presentation, those are the ones you probably are going to need to know. All right, uh, so we have an exam on this material next week then, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. We have an exam every week. That's why we're all stressed out. I'm sorry. You know, and... Can I have some volume, please? Give this chick a chill pill. Yeah, this 